please welcome Nader Hanna. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. You know, I actually don't need a mic. I could go out here because you guys are, uh, we're a small group and I like to amplify my voice and I kind of get a little close, so I hope you don't mind. So just like I was introduced, I'm not a magician in the traditional sense. I do something different. I do experiments of the mind. And I want you to emphasize the word experiments, okay, because they could go wrong. <laughs> but I assure you, if you concentrate, if you want me to succeed, if you participate, allow yourself for that, for this moment, to just open up the idea of possibility, I assure you, I can read your mind. Deal? Okay. Sure. Yeah. Deal, okay. <laughs> And you mentioned hypnosis. So I'll tell you how I got started. My father was an amateur magician and hypnotist in Egypt, which is where I was born. And around 13, 14, he taught me how to hypnotize. I would hypnotize people from school, my sister, friends, it got really weird. And through hypnotism, I built what I call hypersensitivity. I don't call it anything psychic. I call it hypersensitivity. Do you ever read the thoughts? I come from the mind, the child's now the nervous system the body. And I will demonstrate that for you. But first, would you like to see if you're hypnotizable today? So your conscious mind filters information. Right now you're listening to the sound of my voice. There's some things you're accepting, some things you're rejecting. That's what the conscious mind does. However, if I put you in a very relaxed state of mind, what we call a, sort of like a hypnotic induction, your conscious mind goes in advance. It steps aside, allows your subconscious mind to take the forefront of your thought. Your subconscious mind does not filter information. And that makes you hyper suggestible. We have tests, stage of have tests, to see how suggestible you are to allow this process in. Would you like to try? Sure. Okay, if you'd like to try, uncross your legs. It's a basic tent of hypnosis. So allow yourself to open up to it. And have both hands free. Stick your arms out in front of you just like I'm doing. Have your dominant hand palm up. Very good. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath through your nose. You're going to hold that deep breath. And on the exhale, you're going to simply allow your eyes to close. Take a deep breath through your nose. Hold. And release out through your lips as you allow your eyes to close. Very good. Listening to the sound of my voice, I want you to imagine that the hand that's palm up, your dominant hand, I want you to imagine that hand is getting... Heavy, heavy, heavier and heavier with every breath you take. Every breath you take causes that hand to get a little heavier and heavier. Almost as if I put a heavy dictionary on top of that hand, causing the hand to get a little heavier and heavier with every breath you take. Every breath you take causes the hand to get heavier and heavier as the other hand gets lighter and lighter. The other hand gets lighter and lighter as the, the hand that's palm up is getting heavier and heavier with every breath you take that sensation goes a little bit more and a little bit more and a little bit more like little tiny muscular movements building in your arms and in your hands. Open your eyes and take a look. Now I want you to notice, just stay right where you are, look, notice how some of you have a much more exaggerated, some of you didn't move at all which is okay, Your, yours is pretty exaggerated too and, and so is yours. So. You can put your hand down, give yourself a round of applause. So what this tells us, okay, is you have those who have a pretty exaggerated amount have a great imagination. In fact, they're probably they probably fare well if they're in the artistic field. Or maybe they're artists, maybe they're musicians, actors do very well, magicians do very well. We were on this experiment. If it didn't move at all, that just means maybe perhaps, perhaps you're afraid to lose control. Maybe you're a little timid to really try. Maybe your logic, logical mind just doesn't want to step aside, and that is perfectly fine. But for those who did well, I'm going to ask you to come up on stage. We're going to do some more. Uh, Ross, come on up. Wendy, come on up. Give a round of applause. Thank you. 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 Very impressionable folks. Welcome. Hi, girl. <laughs> I brought with me a high security master lock, Ross, because you're in the center. I'm going to give you this lock. Yep. And with every lock, there's uh, obviously a key or keys. 
So Ross, I have a key here for you to try. Go ahead and see if that key opens that lock. Does it open the lock? Let's see, well, it's turning. Does not open, right? Nope. Another key for you to try. Go ahead and take that out. Set it aside. Take this key. Try that one out. Does that open the lock? Just spins. Just spins. Take it out. Now, I did this with a perk, with an intention. I wanted you to know that only one key opens the lock. It's the one that I kept in my left pocket. Ross, take that key, put it in. And you should hear the satisfying snap. Yep. Yep. All right. Take the key out. Lock the lock. Set that down. Pick up all three of those keys and mix them in your hand. Completely mix them. Loose track. Now they're cut very similarly. However, it, unless you look up close, you really can't tell the difference of which one opens that lock. So they won't know. I won't be able to see it. And Ross, yeah, great job. <laughs> and once you're happy with the, with the mixing, go ahead and set them all three in front of you just like that. And uh, ladies, take Go ahead and scrap them. Okay? Good? All right. And I want you to hold that key between your middle finger and your thumb, just like this, above the table, just like I'm doing. Very good. Okay, we're going to take another deep breath. On the exhale, close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And let it out through your lips. And close your eyes. And just allow yourself to relax a little bit more. A little bit more. A little bit more. And I want you to begin to feel that that key in between your finger is getting heavier and heavier. Heavier and heavier, and that key continues to get heavier and heavier with every breath you take. Every breath you take causes that key to get a little heavier and heavier as it starts to slip from between your two fingers as that key gets heavier and heavier. That key slips more and more and more, and one of you will drop their key right onto that table as that key gets heavier and heavier and heavier with every breath you take. That key slips more and more and more as that key gets heavier and heavier and heavier, slipping even more with every breath you take. That key slips even more as it gets heavier and heavier and heavier and even heavier, slipping even more and more until it slips completely from between your two fingers as that key gets heavier. Open your eyes. Very good, open your eyes. Now, Ross dropped his key first, yes? Yes. yes. Now, it fell on the floor, uh, and I don't want to touch anything because I don't want to be accused of doing anything. So, uh, would you do me a favor? Would you mind yeah, grabbing that key? I apologize for me to do that. And handing it over to Ross. Good. Now, here's the strange thing. I've done this experiment hundreds of times. We know that one key opened the lock. And I told you what hypnosis is. Hypnosis is suggestibility mixed with the idiomotor response. That's what we, what we saw demonstrated, and their openness and willingness to allow that process to happen. <laughs> However... <laughs> I like his reaction. He's like, what? <laughs> what I cannot explain, because I've done this enough times to know this works, it's the great area of, of hypnosis we call hypnotic phenomena. 90% of the time, the person who drops their key first happens to be the person who has the key that opens that lock. Now, there's only one way to find out. So, Ross, take your key, take the lock, and if it opens, you deserve a round of applause. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah. And, Ross, stay up here. Uh, you, you folks may have a seat. Yeah, I got a seat. Have a seat. Ross, stay up here. Oh, okay. Okay. Now, Ross, we're going to do something a little bit more challenging, okay? Uh -oh. A little more challenging. Come around the desk. Yeah, okay. We have to get down now, Ross. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ross, the next thing I'm going to do is a, uh, it's an experiment in mind reading. Okay. Now, to be honest, tell everyone you had no idea you're coming in, coming up right now. Is that true? Nope. I had no idea. We didn't prearrange anything. Nope. Not at all. In fact, the only time we paused. I mentioned a moment ago. Just right. briefly, because you wanted to know how to pronounce my name. That was it. Yeah. But otherwise, we didn't set anything up. Correct. Okay. In a moment, Ross, I'm going to look away. So no one thinks I'm tracking your eyes. And you're going to think of anyone, anyone who's in the uh, auditorium. Yeah. Okay? And when you have someone locked in your mind, you just let me know later I have someone in my mind.
Okay, I have someone locked in my mind. Okay, now it's safe to say you're the only one in this room that knows who you're thinking of, yes? Correct. Nothing's wrong. Well, I think so. Yeah, <laughs> nothing's written down. You didn't signal to anyone, nothing. Correct. Right, right. Okay, so in a moment, you're going to will me with your mind to walk to that person. And if they're sitting, you're going to will me to stand them up. And if they're standing, you're going to will me to tap them on the shoulder. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. All right. And now, like I said, I'm hypersensitive to picking up the signals from the mind down to the nervous system of the body, so I do need contact. And what you're going to do, Ross, is you're going to dictate to me directions. Okay? Right, left, straight back until I get to the person. This is only in your mind, nothing verbal. Okay? So you're only wow. thinking. Like I tried right. aliens. Tell them that. Yes, like talking about the clearer you think, the faster it is I'll find that person. Okay. 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 And if I struggle to read your mind, I apologize if I switch you with somebody else. That happens. I can't pick up everyone's signals. That just happens. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Can I see your right hand, please? Yes. Grab my wrist. Yeah. Good. And in a moment, I'm going to move even with me. You just tell me your mind where to go. Oh. Okay. sure that I can't see or hear what you're going to do. And you're going to take that pen and you're going to hide it anywhere you like. Okay. Anywhere at all, as long as my hand can reach and get it. That's it. Okay? Preferably don't put it in any vents because uh, I had people do that once and it, it, it went down and then it was lost. <laughs> 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 I'm sure we can do it like that. It's a pen or is it makeup? Or? Uh, I'm not sure. Is it a, it's no, makeup. Uh, pen. It's a pen. Oh, it's a pen. Okay. 
Depends. It's a very nice looking bed. I find it at an estate sale. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it belonged to a dead person. <laughs> Who would that extra juju? <laughs> Who would like to go out with me to make sure I can't uh, see her here? Okay. Okay. We're going to go this way. And as soon as the object is hidden, I'm, Ross, I want you to know exactly where he's hitting. Oh, okay. You'll be my oh, oh, wow. Okay. okay. Uh, let's no go pressure, this. Ross. <laughs> no pressure. And as soon as it's hidden, would someone come and get us? <laughs> okay, they're outside, though. Okay. It's got, I can see. My name is Emery. Emery. Nice, nice to meet you. This is amazing.
Now in that 1889 date, it was, it was a May of 1889 in New York, Washington Bishop was performing at a private club called the Lance Club. And this was the last feat he did in his presentation. And Washington Bishop was the last thing he ever did because he collapsed while performing. And this is a true story. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Nobody tell them. Not tell her. Okay. So what was after you... pizza, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so Washington Division of Performance, it took a lot of uh, concentration. And he collapsed on stage. Now, two people were watching this demonstration. They were fans of Bishop and they were doctors. They took Bishop, they put him in a room, and while, you know, taking off his clothes to kind of, you know, see his pulse, see what was going on, they found the note. And when they opened the note, the note read, I am a man who's prone to falling into catalepsy. Now catalepsy, for those who know what that is, that you appear to be dead. Your pulse even sometimes sucks. You, you look completely like a dead person. And it, it said, if you find me in this condition, do not operate on me for 48 hours. Now, they were very curious to know how his brain worked. This was 1889, of course. And uh, they thought maybe, you know, maybe he could read mine because his brain was different. It was different, unique in some way. So they decided to pronounce him dead. They opened up his skull, took his brain out to look at it and examine it to see if there was any differences to an average human brain. It was, it was a normal brain. It was normal in every, every way. So they put it back, they stitched him up, <laughs> but they actually, they ended up killing him. So uh, if I, by doing this experiment, if I fall into some sort of state... <laughs> There's a fire department right across the street. <laughs> okay. Check, good. check. <laughs> Uh, Should we wait 48 hours before we all go? Yes, please do, yeah. <laughs> I think I don't know. 40 40, yeah, wait 49. Just to be sure. Now, Wendy, uh, would you mind coming up and helping me? Give her a round of applause. Woo! Oh, I can around the table here. Okay, Wendy, in a moment, my back will be turned and I will be blindfolded. I won't be leaving the room or anything. And I want you to go to um, someone who was not, uh, who hasn't done anything tonight, maybe perhaps. Um, how about the, the gentleman wearing the blue shirt? Sure. Yeah, uh, you can say that. You can say that. Go to him, and uh, he's going to turn to any page. He'll show you the page, whatever that page is. He'll show it to you, and then lock your mind on that page. Close the book. Bring me back up here. Put it just like this, facing this direction, and then tap me on the shoulder. My back will be turned, and I will be blindfolded. Uh, so no one thinks I can see anything. I can still hear, so no one who sees the page say it. And in fact, you can show a few other people the page that was selected. You know, just to keep sort of a committee going. Keeps things honest, okay? And like I said, I'll be blindfolded, but trust me, by removing my glasses, I'm already halfway there. <laughs> and uh, and so it's gone inspect the blindfold, make sure, you know, we live in a technological age, just make sure there's no LCD screen or monitors or anything like that. It's just, yeah, we're <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Okay. I am blindfolded and my back turned. Go ahead and take the book. Take it over to that gentleman. Have him select the page. Lock your mind on that page number. You can show a few people. Do not. Anyone say the page number, keep it a mystery. And when you're done, bring me back to the table and tap me on the shoulder. Put it on the table. Okay. Now, Wendy, you're, you're to my right, yes? Hold my wrist. Here. Is this 
this your right or left hand? Oh, uh, your right? Hold my wrist. Good. Okay. You're going to think right or left based on which direction I need to turn the page to. Okay? If I go past the page you're thinking of, tell me with your mind, we'll need to go back. When I get to that page, you just think in your mind, almost like you shout in your mind, stop. Okay? Mm -hmm. Can you see, uh, from right now, can you see the page uh, numbers okay? Yes. yes. Now, the blindfold helps me to hyper-focus. That's what it's there for. People sometimes think it's, it's to make it more difficult, but it's really to help me hyper-focus. I have a feeling you just thought of something, yes? Yes? I was thinking, but... Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. No, that's okay. I know it's really hard to just focus intently on what page I need to turn to, just focus right or left. Thank you.